So this mission with this pre-flown booster for SES-10 is the fundamental key demonstration that our technology is capable of reflight. First of all, it's an absolutely historic activity that we're about to go do. No one has ever done this before. Given the goals of SpaceX are to provide space transportation to allow people to move to other planets, we're not one-way trip to Mars people. We want to make sure that whoever we take can come back. And from that perspective, you need to have a reusable system. We want to provide a full transportation system, and that doesn't mean one way, that means two ways. This vehicle that we're about ready to fly here, we recovered it last year, and we spent about four months to bring that vehicle to the place where we were comfortable launching it here today. That's reusable, but we're really looking for true operational reusability, like an aircraft. An aircraft lands, goes to the gate, passengers go off, passengers come on, you refuel, and then you fly again. And so what we're looking to do is exactly that. We land and relaunch on the same day. Critically, you have to design the first stage to take the number of pressure cycles that it will see in multiple launches. The final vehicle design spin that we're doing on Falcon 9 that we'll be flying later this year, that should be capable of uh, up to 10 or even more. This is the task at hand. It's a problem to solve, and that's what engineers do. They take a problem that's hard to solve, uh, and they go solve it and ultimately make it operational, which is really what we're going to see here today. SpaceX and SES have uh, a long and successful relationship. They did not hesitate. They knew a previously flown booster was available and they kind of they kind of snatched it up. Uh, so I think it says a lot about SES as a company. This will be written up. This is a historic event. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Liftoff from Falcon 9 is going first B flight of Mobile Class Rocket. Falcon 9 is near the tower. Falcon 9 power and left you nominal. Coming up on T plus one minute into flight, a lot of cheering here in Hawthorne. We're throttling the engines down as we get ready for maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. seconds. We're throttled back up. Falcon 9 continues to head downrange. Trajectory is nominal. We're past maximum dynamic pressure. That's the portion of the flight where the velocity of the vehicle combines with the density of the atmosphere at lower altitudes to put the greatest stresses on the Falcon 9. We're through that critical phase of flight. The next major event coming up in about 35 seconds, main engine cutoff. successfully has separated. Second stage is up on power. Trajectory looks nominal. All systems continue to be going. Next major activity in about 20 seconds, we're going to look for fairing separation around the SES-10 spacecraft. Has 
successfully separated. The MVAC engine continues to power the upper stage into the lower parking orbit. Engine looks good, the trajectory looks good. We're at T plus four minutes and the flight continues to be go. So far is a successful launch of Falcon 9 carrying SES-10. First stage has separated from second stage. That's what you see on the left-hand side of your screen. That's the first stage coming back down once again. This is the second time we've launched it. This is the second time we're attempting to land it on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you, which is in the Atlantic Ocean. And we hear the call out. We have start of entry bone. This burn will last just under 20 seconds. And shut down. And as it heads for the atmosphere, second stage continues to be on target. Propulsion looks good. Everything continues to be go at seven minutes and five seconds into flight. So we're gonna go back down to the floor as we get ready for the landing of the first stage in the orbit of the second stage. like we may not have a continuous video feed from the drone ship right now. Like we said, uh, this, this is expected. Um, we don't currently have direct line of sight with that drone ship. Uh, we only have a satellite link, and as it gets down uh, kind of close, uh, the, those engine, that Merlin engine uh, can vibrate the satellite link. All right, well, we just had an incredible day today. Uh, the first reflight of an orbital class booster um, did its mission perfectly, dropped off the second stage, uh, came back and landed on the drone ship uh, right in the bullseye. Uh, it's an amazing day, I think, for space uh, as a whole, for the, sp for the space industry. It means you, you, can, uh, you can fly and refly an orbit class booster, which is the most expensive part of the rocket. Uh, this is going to be ultimately a huge revolution in spaceflight. Uh, it's the difference between uh, if you had airplanes where you, you threw away an airplane after every flight versus you could reuse them multiple times. Um, so it's been 15 years to get to this point. It's taken us a long time. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of difficult steps along the way, but um, I'm just incredibly proud of the SpaceX team for being able to, to uh, achieve this uh, incredible milestone in the history of space. Um, and um, yeah, I'm sort of at a loss for words, but it's, it's really a, a great day, not just for, for SpaceX, but for the space industry as a whole, and proving that something can be done that many people said was impossible. Thank you.